This is the first time we're hearing from law enforcement since Jasmine Pace went missing last week. In a bit of a non-traditional way to approach these kinds of addresses, Mayor Tim Kelly avoided the speech of accolades in a 46 page complaint that he made public that District Attorney Neil Pinkston did not include his wife or her brother in the department's budget request. Paul, and this all started from out right off of Bonnie Oaks Drive, but multiple different police chases led police here. And we're talking about right off UTC's campus and right near the federal courthouse. We're going to step out of the way and give you a closer look at what we're seeing. You ever cut me off again? I'll beat the out of you. A violent road rage incident in Chattanooga caught on camera. I'm Liam Collins coming up tonight on Local 3 News at 6. From bottom to top, her mailbox measures 42 inches, well within the guidelines on the USPS website. Latrice, they just wrapped up some traditional Ukrainian songs just a few moments ago. Now they're walking across the Walnut Street Bridge. Catalytic converters like these are becoming more valuable and being stolen off cars nationwide. Also named in that lawsuit is Deputy Daniel Wilkie. That's the deputy who was previously named in a separate civil rights lawsuit for baptizing a woman against her will. Liam, what led investigators to rule this a homicide? Cindy, investigators found enough evidence inside of Jason Chen's North Shore apartment that pointed to him as a suspect. And then later, even more evidence they found gave them probable cause for homicide and tonight they say they need even more of the public's help to bring Jasmine home. Sobs filled a packed Chattanooga PD conference room Wednesday as law enforcement announced Jasmine Pace's missing persons case is now a homicide. Our main concern is Jasmine. Um, our main concern is her location. Hamilton County District Attorney Cody Womp announced a boyfriend she met just a few months ago on a dating app was arrested and charged in her death. Investigators say evidence found in his apartment pointed to him as a suspect and later gave police probable cause for homicide. We're still getting further evidence to include records and technology that are still coming in. Um, our search is pretty broad right now. Police confirmed her last known location was at Chen's apartment in North Shore, Chattanooga. Her car, though, was found miles away at the Signal View Apartments on Mountain Creek Road. Police say they believe Jasmine turned to Chen to comfort her over a recent family death. They said from the beginning they believed she was with him. Jasmine has a voice through the state of Tennessee, um, through myself as district attorney general, and uh, we won't stop until we see justice in this case. Police are continuing their search for her, which is currently focused on the Chattanooga area. Friends and family told us when we spoke with them Monday that they speak with her every day. And that is so very unlike her. There's not a day that they don't hear from Jasmine, let alone an hour. They're still wrapping their heads around the girl they call Jazzy being gone. Police assured families their mission is to bring her home. We need help from the public still because again, our main concern is Jasmine and where she is at. We will not stop until we find her. What attorneys have been describing for years and in court filings, we saw how both parties in this case believe it plays into their arguments. Uh, in cell phone video recorded by another Hamilton County deputy, Shandel Riley claims this is the moment Deputy Daniel Wilkie baptized her against her will. <laughs> The two-minute video shows Riley following Wilkie into Saudi Lake. <sighs> After the baptism happened, they hugged. We believe that the video evidence is what supports all of Ms. Riley's claims. Riley died in April from an apparent drug overdose. Robin Flores is representing her estate for claims Wilkie violated Riley's civil rights. In February of 2019, Wilkie pulled Riley over for illegally tinted windows. That's when Wilkie wrote her a citation for marijuana possession. But Riley claims Wilkie said she wouldn't be arrested and could go about her business if she got back. Baptized. In court filings, Flores writes Wilkie touched her all over her body and had her shake her bra vigorously during the search. The illegal seizure at the house, the duration of the seizure, as I put into my brief, uh, far exceeded what was necessary for her detention. Please point to me where there's any sign that Jacob Goforth or anyone coerced Ms. Riley into being baptized. Jerry Tidwell represents Goforth in the case. 
In their response, defendants argue there is no proof Riley was coerced into the baptism and does not appear to be in any video filed in court. They also argue Wilkie searched Riley's bra because it was a common place for hiding drug paraphernalia. Uh, he arrived at the boat ramp knowing that a baptism was occurring. What he didn't know is it was somebody that had been sighted. He finds that out on the scene and has a minute or so to react. That's when Tidwell says he started recording this video. me and the Holy Spirit. To record the moment in case it was needed later. To say that he shouldn't have done that, I can understand people say that. However, uh, tell me what law he broke. On the corner of Tennessee and Nashville in Ringgold, Georgia, artist Kim Radford is painting the town's legacy. When anything you're associated with Dolly is positive, it's inclusive. Radford was hired by the city to paint a mural of Dolly Parton in a prominent part of downtown Ringgold. She's a beautiful woman to paint. <laughs> but it's not Radford's first rodeo. She's already been hired to paint these two murals in Nashville of the queen of country music. It's an honor to be associated with her. It's an honor to be asked to paint her. Um, now for the third time. It's putting the city of Ringgold on the map. Radford is calling this a tie the knot mural because Dolly was married just blocks from here nearly 60 years ago. Okay, how do I look? Dolly Parton sat down with Local 3 Cindy Sexton in a one-on-one -on -one interview 10 years ago. She told us her record label didn't want her to get married since she was new to the music scene. We went that next weekend, sneaked up because we didn't want to go anywhere close by. So she and now husband of more than 55 years, Carl Dean, landed in Ringgold, Georgia to get married at the First Baptist Church. At the time, the city was famous as a place to get hitched quick. That now ironically famous wedding was the inspiration behind Radford's Bold's new mural. It a, um, pays tribute to their long marriage together, so I hope maybe they'll come by and get a picture, who knows. <laughs> that wishful thinking may just come true. Dolly told us in 2012 the couple tries to celebrate their anniversary in the city. Because we try to go down every year if we can. We at least go every, at least every three years. We take a trip down there and have a picnic. But she explained, you probably would never know. I'm not totally in my rhinestones. I used to put on a little makeup for my husband. I usually have my own hair just pulled up a little scrunchie or something. But you wouldn't think about it. You know, you just don't see me that. But if you hear me or see me up close, you know it's me. But we know how to do it. We've been doing this for years there. That's a sacred, special place to us. But there is definitely an interest, kind of an ongoing interest. That sacred, special place is where Eric Kennedy preaches today. We don't talk every Sunday about welcome to the church Dolly Parton got married in, but but it is sort of, a, I think it's a, a beloved sort of piece of history for the community. But he says people still ask him about it, maybe even more so now that the face of the woman who brought this church to fame will forever live just a few blocks down. I believe art takes as long as it takes, and I'm not going to walk away and say, uh, I'm done. I'm going to walk away when I believe it's just right. The city is paying Radford $27,000 to paint the mural. She plans to finish it by the end of the week, but as you just heard, she may stretch it out a little bit longer if she feels like she should. Now, Dolly and Carl Dean's 56th wedding anniversary, by the way, is next month on May 30th. And now, of course, they have the perfect place to go ahead and celebrate that. And Cindy, you know I'm just absolutely <laughs> obsessed with this story. You know, I was talking about with we were talking yeah. about last week. I need to know what was it like to yeah. interview the Queen of Country Music. I felt so fortunate to get to do that.